Ever since the launch of the Maruti 800, the 800cc engine capacity seems to have been the success mantra for the entry-level hatchbacks. But times have changed. People want more for their money. And with their spending capacity increasing every day, they want a lot more from their car. So entry-level hatchbacks with 1.0-litre engines are fast becoming popular. The Eon got the 1.0-litre treatment very recently. And the Alto K10, it is back with an all-new avatar. It's got a revised chassis, all-new bodywork and an improved engine. Though based on the familiar 1.0-litre 3-cylinder K-series engine, the new mill is dubbed as the K-Next and boasts of low-friction components and better thermal management. The result is an engine that is not only more refined but also more fuel-efficient. It produces the same 64 PS of power and 90 Nm of torque as the older K10. The Eon, on the other hand, uses the older 1.0-litre Kappa engine from the export version of the earlier i10. It puts out a marginally higher power and torque output of 69 PS and 94 Newton meters. The Alto also feels more athletic as compared to the Eon. It has good acceleration and a good mid-range as well. You can easily amble around in city in third and fourth gear without having to downshift every now and then. Even out on the highway, pulling overtakes is not a problem. You have this good top spread between 2000 to 3000 RPM. You also feel that surge coming in at about 2500 RPM. But that said, this car is not really made for highway use. Now, when we did the first dev review of the Alto K10, I remember mentioning that once you get used to the car, it will start feeling like a fun little Japanese hatchback. I was wrong, because it doesn't. You know, it feels very wallowy. So when you start pushing the car around bends, it starts becoming a little unnerving. The tyres are too skittish, there's a lot of body roll. I never expected I would say this, but the Hyundai, the Eon, that feels more fun, more stable and more planted through the corners. The early Alto was definitely better. While both the cars come with 5-speed manual gearboxes, the Alto K10 also has the option of an automated manual transmission, which as we mentioned previously, is effective and highly rewarding. The new Alto K10 is a slicker city car then. It's quick, easy to drive and the steering feedback is amazing at city speeds. The Eon on the other hand has a surprisingly heavy steering, heavier than the Eon 800 steering even. The gearing could have been slightly better too. When driving around in city, you will notice that the first gear is quite short and the second and third gear is quite tall. Even the throws for the gear stick are quite long. As far as the acceleration goes, it is quite good. The mid-range could have been better. So you need those frequent gear shifts if you are looking at overtaking, be it on the highway or in the city commutes. But getting off the mark is quite easy. The top end is also quite decent, so if you plan to take this car out on the highways, it won't be a bad idea. That is because the Eon feels more stable even at triple digit speeds. Though the Eon and the Alto K10 don't get ABS even as an option, the Eon feels far more composed under braking. As far as ride quality goes, like any other Hyundai, the Eon also impresses for the size and the class that this car belongs to. The ride quality is quite good on broken surfaces, even on undulations, it absorbs it quite well. The Alto comes with a cushy ride over undulated surfaces, but over sharp bumps and potholes, you will hear annoying thudding and crashing sounds. Expect these to lead to rattling plastics within a few thousand kilometers. Speaking of plastics, the Eon has the upper hand with its proven build quality and elements that are nicely put together. The prim and proper finish of the larger Hyundai cars has trickled down to the Eon as well. The symmetrical layout, satin finish inserts and the generous contouring and matte treatment all looks good to me. The centre of attraction inside the Alto K10 has to be the wedge-shaped centre console. It is fairly large and makes the dashboard look wider than what it is. It has simple lines and depending on what you prefer, it can either look too bland to you or can make the Eon's dash look busy. There is little to choose between the design of these two cabins. The features are closely matched too and the only ones worth talking about are the power windows and the audio systems which are compatible with USB and AUX inputs. The Eon's unit sounds better and also comes with provisions for rear speakers. More importantly, the Eon has better cabin space as well. 
Now, technically, the entry-level cars are the smallest cars that you can buy in the country. So the space is definitely not going to be as much as a premium hatchback. But let's still look at what the rear seat space is like. Now, both the driving seats in the Alto and in the Eon have been set to my driving preference. And this is the kind of space that I have. Now, the knee room is decent. My knees are touching the seat. But because of these scooped out panels here, I can sort of get a little bit better knee room. Foot space is good. Under thigh support is decent. Headroom is also quite good. And because these windows are large, I get a nice airy feel. Let's check out the Eon. Now, clearly, the Eon is the more spacious car. Now, I can't show it to you clearly here because of the seat covers, but the contouring on the seat back of the Eon is much better than what you have in the Alto. So, the knee room is really quite good. The foot space is very generous. Under thigh support is good. Because the Eon is a tall boy, even the headroom is pretty decent. Now, the windows are large, but this window line rises up. So, for adults, it's good. But if you have kids sitting in here, they may just end up feeling a little claustrophobic. Backrest, I don't like the angle. It's a little too upright for my liking. And these headrests, they're not very comfortable. And in the event of a rear-end collision, they're not really going to prevent the whiplash. So, in terms of safety as well, not a big addition. Despite having a more spacious cabin, the Eon is actually the smaller car. It does have more visual bulk though. Apart from the badges, there is no design distinction for the 1-litre variant from the 800cc counterpart. The Alto K10 on the other hand is a very different looking car. Though it shares the same doors, windows and the roof as the Alto 800, it sits on a completely different chassis and wears larger headlamps and the family look tail lights. While the previous K10 looked more aggressive than the older Alto, the new K10 looks simpler and cleaner than the current Alto 800. It is a fresher looking car, but not as lean and racy as the Eon. Design though is a personal preference. You won't go wrong buying the Eon. It's got a roomier cabin and it's also very well put together. It has a sense of premiumness to it, but it also charges a premium for that space and that quality. But that said, the Alto K10 isn't too far behind on both those counts. For lesser money than the Eon, you can end up buying the top spec variant of the Alto K10, but you can also buy the AMT or the Automated Manual Transmission of the Alto in that same price bracket. And in that sense, the Alto makes the clear winner here.